Hello, my name is Wasim Siddiqui and I am in Cisco DNA Engineering Group. Cisco DNA Center is a controller for your network and applications. It provides a one-stop shop for network automation, observability, and programmability. Today, I will discuss how you can use the issue dashboard feature of Cisco DNA Assurance to monitor your network problems. So what is the Cisco DNA's issue dashboard? It is a feature that provides a centralized view of your network issues, allowing you to quickly identify, diagnose, and resolve problems. This dashboard provides a real-time view into your network problems. The dashboard also offers insights and recommendations to mitigate these problems and optimize your network performance. It is actually one of our most popular features. I will walk through the issue dashboard features in two separate videos. The first video will cover the basics of the issue dashboard, while the second video will, go, will cover the more advanced features of the issue dashboard. In the first video, we will see how you can use the issue dashboard in your day-to-day -day, uh, work to quickly identify the problems happening in your network to prioritize them and to work on them. We will go through the time and location filter, the trend line information, as well as the issue table. We will then dive into the one into one of the issue in detail and see the data that is provided there for you to understand and troubleshoot that particular problem. In the second set of video, we will go through how you can customize these issues for your particular environment. You can enable or disable these issues, change priorities, or in some cases, change the threshold of these issues. You can even customize these issues differently for each site. You will be able to define your own set of issues based on the incoming syslog pattern. We will see also how you can enable notification for these issues so that you can be notified in real time when these problem happens via these mechanisms. You will be able to add comments and notes for your reference in the issue detail itself. And we will also cover a few other topics. So let's get started on our issue dashboard. Let's go to our demo cluster. Click on the burger menu here, assurance, issues and events, and this brings you to our issue dashboard. So what is some of the information presented here? Let's start from the top. We have two filters here, a location filter and a time filter. By default, we have a global view of the problems, but you can filter it to any specific location. So if you are responsible for a particular site, then you can filter on that site and only observe problems reported for that particular site. Next is our time filter. By default, we show a 24 hour view, which means the problems we have observed in your network for the last 24 hours. You can change that to a three hour view, a 24 hour view, or a seven day view. The starting and the end date for these time ranges can also be modified. We save the issue data for up to 30 days. So you can observe problems for these time uh, window for up to 30 days, in effect, allowing you to do a bit of time travel. This will help you for problems that have been reported in the past. So you can time travel back at that time, observe the problems reported at that time and troubleshoot the problem at that time. Next, we have our trend chart. This shows you the issues as they occur. We have a bit of color coding going on here. The red color is for P1, orange for P2, gray and black for P3 and P P4. The shading of these colors determine the number of issues observed. So the darker the, the shading, the more the problems that have been observed. This allows you to see if a particular set of problems started at a particular time or if the problems were bunched around a specific time. Hopefully this will help you pinpoint, help you pinpoint what happened at that time and figure out if that was 
the cause of the problems. Next, we show you the top three sites that are impacted from an issue perspective. Then we have the issue table itself. We have some basic filters. You can apply filtering on priority, whether they are AI driven or not. And then you can search table, search the table or filter the table. These are our standard options for any DNA table. You can also export the data as well. Here we have the issue type or the issue category. So for example, radio down six gigahertz, all the problems observed in this particular area will be in this section. We also show you the number of issues observed, the sites impacted, the devices impacted, and the last time when the problem happened. This allows you to, uh, to see where the problem is happening, how many devices are impacted, and how many times the problem has happened. Hopefully, it will ha help you to prioritize what problems to debug first. Now, let's go through one of the problem in detail. Let's choose the radio down 5 gigahertz problem. Looks like there's one problem observed in this area. We show you the site, the device name itself. This is linked to its device 360 page. What device type it is. For AP problems, we show you the switch name and the port on which the AP is connected as well. This is the issue details page, which tells you more detailed information about the problem. Here is some of the basic information about the problem, which AP obviously, why did the radio went down, if we know the reason. In this case, we don't. It's an unknown reason. Which controller it's connected to, which switch, which port, the country code, the power status of the AP, as well as the RF profile on which the AP is on. Here it's a summary of the impact of that problem in terms of sites, clients, and APs. Next, we have a couple of tabs, which goes into a bit more detail. The first tab is the problem details section, which gives you a bit more, uh, a bit more information about the problem. We have a map here uh, to show you where the AP is located and where the other APs are located as well, and some of other basic information. Next, we have an impact detail section. It tells you the impact of the problem impact on the wireless client as well as the location. Since the AP is down, no clients are connected, so there is currently no impact on the clients itself. Location, there is one location impacted. Next, we have a suggested action tab. This is a list of uh, troubleshooting steps that hopefully will help you to figure out what's happening and hopefully root cause the problem. So this is our issue detail page. Next, we will go through some of the advanced features of the issue. The link for that video can also be found in the description below. More thing to go through, which is the status of an issue. There are three types of status in the issue dashboard, open, resolved, and ignored. Open simply means the issue is still open. Resolved means the issue has been fixed or resolved. Ignored means ignore the issue for a specific time period. Let's talk about resolve status. There are two ways the issue can go into resolve status. One is by changing the status manually, and the other mechanism is the auto resolution mechanism. I am currently logged in as an observer mode, but if I had admin, um, admin role, I would be able to change this status uh, to resolve state. There'd be a drop down here allowing me to change the status to from open to resolve or ignored. So that's the manual way. The auto resolution uh, method is a mechanism by which we automatically detect if the issue is resolved and change the status of that issue to resolve status automatically. So that's called auto resolution. We don't support this mechanism for all issues. We support it for about 15 to 20 issues and, as, and we are working through to support auto-resolution for all of our issues. 
the uh, last status is the ignored status. Ignored basically means the issue is known, it is expected, so ignore the issue for the next x hours. I will go through this in the next video in the advanced topic as well on how to change to the ignored mode. You can do that from the issue detail page. You can also observe this from the main dashboard page as well. From the issues page, by default, we show you the open issues, but all the resolved issues actually move into the resolved tab. So these are the resolved issues. And you can also see those issues that you've moved into ignored state. In this example, in this cluster, we don't have any ignored issues, but we had a few resolved issues. So that concludes our basic issue dashboard features. So that concludes our basic introduction to the issue dashboard. Next, we will go through the advanced uh, features of the issue dashboard. The link of that video can be found in the description below as well. Thank you. And here are some links for your references to get more information. Thank you.